afternoon from London of News, Melbourne, Australia on Friday the 18th. I would like you to have a look at Tucker Carson, one of my favorite, along with Sean Hannity from uh, Fox News. Great guys. Tell the truth. No rubbish. No BS. And his guest star today is Steve, Steve Bannon. Now, they, they talk about this, the virus thing and the corruption of the Democrats. It's really worth watching. But I'd just like to introduce that. And after that's over, hang in. It's only a little bit. There's a document up, which I'll try and put a little picture of it up here in the corner. And it is all about the corruption and our, and our constitutions in 19 or 1900, right up till now, what the Labour Party has done, all the, the acts, all the crooks, all these people that should be in jail and they're now running the place. You've got to watch it. I did slow it down as much as possible because it's quite a long document. Of course, you can always stop the transmission at any time and to read on further. But please have a look at it and watch it till the end. It's, it's worth it. So for about a year, we've been talking about the presidential election out there somewhere on the horizon. You wake up this morning and you realize it's 47 days away. Less than a month from right now. We will be the first Tuesday in November, and we're going to vote for a new president. This has been by far the most intense presidential election season in the lifetime of anyone watching it. But it feels like we're moving towards something even more intense. What's going to happen on Election Day and in the days following? The people who've been thinking most clearly about this on both sides are the people who've done it before, who've been involved at a high level on a presidential campaign. Steve Bannon has done that. He's one of the people who ran Donald Trump's 2016 effort. He was recently back in the news last month. He was indicted on fraud charges related to a nonprofit, a Build the Wall nonprofit he was running. He hasn't been on television since then. He hasn't given any interviews on advice of counsel. But we wanted to hear what he thinks is going to happen as we move toward November. We also wanted to ask him about the charges against him. He agreed to come on tonight, and we're happy to have him. Steve Bannon, thanks a lot for coming. So I, I want to ask hey, you thanks, first. Tucker. Thanks for having you, me. You reemerged in the national consciousness in a fairly big way uh, in August when you were arrested on fraud charges. You haven't responded uh, publicly that I'm aware of to those charges. So I want to give you a chance uh, to sum up your views on it. Well, you know, Bill Burke's my attorney. You know him. I think he's the best attorney in, in D.C. So he says, hey, you should lay off this. But look, I, I, I got to come forward. You know, uh, Attorney General Barr said it, I think, at Hillsdale the other night. This is, uh, this is headhunting of high-profile uh, political targets that are associated with President Trump. It's not random that it was four years almost to the day that I took over the campaign that these, uh, this indictment came out, right? What these guys wanted to do was uh, criminalize political speech, make sure I didn't go back to the campaign. What they messed up is I was never going back to the campaign. The campaign's in great shape. You got Bill Stepien, Jason Miller, Steve Cortez, others. They're doing a great job and will deliver a victory on November 3rd for President Trump. So. I have been, because of my work on war room pandemic, we were the first guys to be on the pandemic in January. We understood what your opening segment was about, Tucker. The Democratic Party has traumatized their base. They're not going to come out to vote. And so somehow they have to concoct a, some effort to steal this election because they're not going to get people to come out and vote on game day, the 3rd of November of this year. And that's what I've been I, working I, on for the last couple of months. I was never going back. I was never going back to the campaign. And that's where these guys messed up. My platform's bigger now. My voice is bigger. I've got more resources. And all we're focused on is to make sure that so, the progressive so I, left and the corporatists cannot steal, cannot steal the election from Donald Trump. I, I want to just drill down briefly because this is a complex topic and you're going to have an sure. opportunity to respond in court. Um, but the, yeah. the sort of macro charge you, is you defrauded people who sent you money to build a wall. You said you wouldn't take any of the money. The charges claim that you did. What's your response to that? I, I had my, my C4 had a one, if you read the indictment, I had a $1 million contract, okay, to kind of be the D.C. office, oversee the wall uh, construction, to, to do seminars, conferences. If you want to see it, you know, go to Vice News, go to BBC, go to the opening uh, season of, uh, of uh, Showtime's The Circus, the opening episode in the 19th season. They're traveling around the country following us on these town halls. We had town halls, conferences. We built a wall, a, a two-thirds of a mile of wall up a mountain in El Paso within 100 days of starting. I was, I was a contractor and ran an advisory board that brought together the best 
and brightest of all the wall people. So they're not going to criminalize. They're not going to shut me down about talking about the wall. They're not going to criminalize us talking about the wall. Okay. We brought in Kobach and, and Sheriff Clark and all these guys. So that's what the indictment failed to say. But look, all that will come out in court it, over it, time. It, it will. It will. And I don't. Is that they're not. The key, yeah, the key the, thing is they're not going to shut me. They want to criminalize political speech, and they're not going to shut me down. I'm more focused than ever. We're kicking off a national tour on Monday called The Plot to Steal 2020. They're not going to stop my voice in assisting President Trump and making sure that this election that he's going to win on the third is not stolen from him. Big tech is clearly taking a side in this election. They have unprecedented levels of power over what people know. Um, and I'm wondering how you think they will use that power as we approach the election specifically. You, you, you saw the other night you had Dr. Yan on from from uh, from China as a fact witness on the on the weapons labs over there and also wrote this amazing paper. What 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 Twitter did is ripped her Twitter account down right away. They took her off Facebook when they had the replay of your show that was on fire throughout the world. And but they allowed the Chinese Communist Party to beat down on her every second with all of their running dogs. That's what you're going to see. That's a preamble to what's going to happen on November 3rd. They're talking about it. They're already saying both Facebook and Twitter that they're not going to announce a winner. Here's what's going to happen. Donald J. Trump is going to win the vote on the only day that matters. That's November 3rd. He's going to win the real election in the way we've done it with secret ballots, with people going into a, a booth and voting for president of the United States. OK, by that evening, he will be the winner. And what they're going to do is that between the lawfare they've got with 800 attorneys under Eric Holder, the mob they've got with Antifa and the radical elements of Black Lives Matter, but most importantly, the digital muscle of Facebook and Twitter, they're going to sit there and they're going to not declare Trump the winner. You were right there running the campaign four years ago today. Looking at the poll numbers now as objectively as you can, as compared to the numbers you were looking at four years ago today, how do you think the president's reelect looks? I think the president, I think the team's done a great job. When I look at these numbers in the, in the cross tabs, when I drill down on them, I think the president's got a, not just a great shot. I think he will be the winner on November 3rd. I think the, the, I think the campaign's totally focused. I think Biden is a cipher. He can't draw a crowd. So I think, I think right now that I think the campaign's doing great. The president's doing great. I see a victory on November 3rd. And I was the first guy to tell me he was going to win back in August of 16. Huh. And then maybe the real contest begins. Steve Bannon, I'm glad that you came on. Thank you that's very when, much. That's when the war starts. I, I, Thanks, I'm Tucker. Beginning to th I'm beginning to think that's true. Um, appreciate it. Thank you.
I couldn't tell anyway Cause though I made the great escape I never got away Come running home again Katie, come running home again Crossing my heart and hope to die Shall I cause another tear from your eye Come running home again Come running home again Crossing my heart and hope to die Shall I cause another tear from your eye, Katie? go Jenny no need to close the door what if the dust gets in the house doesn't matter anymore you and the dust have been at war for far too many years the war is over Jenny dear Than all I've ever been and everything I am. Leave in the light. Remember when I brought you here those long bright years ago. For all that time you've been in my heart. And this land has been my soul The long bright days are over now But still the heart beats on But Jenny dear, the soul is gone Even all I've ever been and everything I am Even the land And go, Jenny Walk quickly down the track Never see what lies ahead If we keep on looking back Behind is just an empty house Of oh, memories and ghosts And our smoke fiends gather in the dark
Looking for answers to questions that bothered him so. He was impressive, young and aggressive, saving the world on his own. But the warm summer breezes, the French wines and cheeses, put his ambition at bay. The summers and winters, Scattered like splinters, and four or five years slipped away. Then he went to England, played the piano, married an actress named Kim. They had a good life, she was a good wife, for him a young son named Jim. Had all of the answers and all of the questions. Locked in his attic one day Cause he liked the quiet, clean country living And twenty more years slipped away with every pretty girl I can find. 
Guilty conscience, I guess, though I must confess, I never loved you much when you were mine. So I'll keep drinking champagne, feeling no pain till early morning. Dining and dancing. Anita, come closer, stop crying and listen to me. I guess it's too late now, but somehow I must make you see. What we thought was our world was only a dream world, and we just can't go on like this. Anita, you're dreaming of a world that can never exist. Anita, it's over. There's nothing left now to say. Anita, you're dreaming, and I know it's better this way. Anita, come closer, close your pretty blue eyes. Your young dreams just can't be, and somehow you must realize that each time you're with me, my conscience reminds me of someone who's waiting alone. Anita, you're dreaming, and when you awake, I'll be gone. Anita, it's over, there's nothing left now to say. Anita, you're dreaming, and I know. I got a call from my best friend this evening. He said he wasn't going out with us guys on Friday night. Yeah, he was going to change for his newfound flame to keep us satisfied. I just laughed and said, hey, man, go ahead and try. Cause I gave up smoking women and drinking last night And it was the worst 15 minutes of my life Now I've heard it said that too much fun will kill you And I'd be the first to tell you that I don't want to die too many 12-ounce curls, pretty girls and parties ain't goodbye. Well, take it from me, don't believe all that hype. Cause I gave up smoking women 
and drinking last night. It was the worst 15 minutes of my life. That's right. So you might as well raise a little hell tonight Cause I gave up smoking women and drinking last night It was the worst 15 minutes of my life It was the worst 15 minutes of my life That's right Never again. Well, my name's John Lee Pettimore, same as my daddy and his daddy before. You hardly ever saw granddaddy down here. He only come to town about twice a year. He'd buy a hundred pound of yeast and some copper lime. Everybody knew that he made moonshine Now the revenue man won a granddaddy bad He headed up the hollow with everything he had It's before my time But I've been told He never come back from Copperhead Road Daddy ran a whiskey in a big black Dodge Bought it at an auction at the Mason's Lodge Johnson County Sheriff painted on the side Just shot a coat of primal and he looked inside Well, him and my uncle tore that engine down I still remember that rumbling sound Then the sheriff came around in the middle of the night I heard mama crying, knew something went right He was headed down to Knoxville with a weekly load You could smell a whiskey burning down Copperhead Road
bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free Sometimes you need to go and take a step back to see the truth around you from a distance you can tell. to be in the great outdoors forever free you and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever
Well, that was a lot of reading. I hope you enjoyed it because it, it's, it was fascinating stuff. I'd like to congratulate the man or the woman who put that document together. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the name of the man or woman who did it, but I do congratulate them even if they're not a friend of mine or if they are a friend of mine. Great, they've done a great job and I'd like to thank them very much for it. Anyway, London News signing off now, but I'm bringing up a, another video. I hope to have it up over the weekend. Is about fines, the corruption in relations to the fines, how to, how to take care of your fines, and how to avoid going to court. Now, there's a lot of rubbish out there about walking in and saying, oh, I'm a man, I, I, it doesn't apply to me, the Constitution is gone, and the courts are all well. I'm going to put a show you how to put your ID together, which is very important to, to distinguish who you really are and how the paperwork you put in before you accept their invitation to do business in their dry docks, right? So all they are is, is vessels in dry docks and they invite you to do business there. So there are certain ways of going there. So have a look at this video. I hope to have it ready for the weekend. So anyway, it's London News sign off. Thanks for watching, guys. This is just a filler. But the documentation after Tucker Carlson is very important to read. I read it twice, and I still would love to read it again. Bye for now. <laughs>